Hi, welcome to Tips for Remote Product Management. My name is Pablo Sanzo. I currently work as a senior product manager at a large tech company. Something peculiar about my professional path is that I've been working for more than five years with local and remotely located peers and stakeholders. A typical workday for me involves interacting with business stakeholders from all European countries and Japan and with design and engineering teams located in the US and in India. Because of this, I have found some tips and tricks that make remote product management work better. Today, I want to share with you four straightforward tips. Ultimately, product management is about communicating. And remote product management is simply about communicating more. It's like a hard mode of product management. So I hope that these tips will be applicable and useful to you, even if you don't work in a remote environment. My first tip is quite basic. Share notes after you discuss anything with anyone. You need to realize that in a remote environment, the channel for communication is a bit more restricted than in person. When discussing in person, on top of the message, the participants are receiving constant feedback in the form of small sounds, looks, and gestures. In a remote environment, even if discussing on video, most of this feedback is lost. For this reason, you need to allow for other avenues and opportunities to receive feedback. This will allow you to validate that everyone has the same understanding. You will avoid misalignments that can very easily result in products being built incorrectly or late. In my experience, the best way to do this is by summarizing your understanding of what has been discussed and requesting the other part to correct you if you misunderstood. If you have a bias for action, your meeting notes will always include action item, owner, and ETA. The action item is what is going to be done. The best action items are precise and speak about inputs. Someone is going to execute something. The owner is who has the commitment, the responsibility of the thing getting done. Whether they later delegate is up to them as long as the thing gets done. Ideally, the owner was part of the conversation. If the owner was not part of the conversation, loop them in the notes to make sure that they are aware. It typically works best if each action item has a single owner. Finally, the ETA is an estimate of when the thing is going to be done. ETA stands for Estimated Time of Arrival. As such, it is always an estimate and can always be wrong. If you work in a high-performing team, the consensus will be that when an owner cannot deliver on an ETA, they will alert the stakeholders on or before the ETA and provide a new ETA. Sometimes an ETA cannot be provided. Sometimes 
it's too early in an investigation to make a realistic estimate. In those occasions, it's better to offer a DFD, which stands for date for date. You need to foster an environment of trust in which your stakeholders are encouraged to take commitments and provide ETAs. To achieve this, you need to be consistently trustworthy. You must not abuse the notes. You should not include in the notes anything that was not part of the discussion. And your interpretation of the discussion must be honest and impartial. Finally, you need to welcome amendments to your notes. That's precisely why you're sending them. It would make no sense to get upset about being wrong. You are winning, you are making progress precisely because you are finding out that you were wrong. To make things simpler, you can always use the same structure to send notes. This is the one that I use lately. Thanks for your attention, team. I captured these notes. Please amend or add. Someone to do something by some date, someone else to do something else by some date, or someone to provide an ETA for something by some date. And then open topics to discuss, topic A, topic B, and so on. Now you're sending notes after you discuss anything with anyone. You will typically discuss topics that are complex in nature, topics that require a lot of back and forth. For these topics, you will want to have a live conversation. Uh, let's call this synchronous work. Another type of work is asynchronous work. This you do on your own to prepare for other discussions or to meet your commitments from previous discussions. To protect both synchronous and asynchronous work, you want to give each a dedicated space in your agenda. For this reason, my second tip is schedule recurrent sessions to do synchronous work with your stakeholders. That way, both your stakeholders and yourself can plan your days better. You can group synchronous discussions together and save long sessions for concentration work. This is sometimes referred to as deep work. See the difference? My recommendation is that you make a list of all your key stakeholders and you make sure that you have recurrent meetings with all of them. Weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly. The cadence can be different depending on how much you have to discuss with these stakeholders. The cadence is also not set in stone. You can change the cadence, increase it or decrease it if the needs change. And you can express it just like that. You want to have generic recurrent slots with these stakeholders. In the calendar invite, clarify that this is a placeholder and that you will be providing an agenda for each in advance. And then do that. Provide an agenda at least one day in advance if possible. Your stakeholders can also add to the agenda. Having an agenda laid out will make life so much easier for you. When the meeting starts, you don't need to do an effort to remember what you wanted to tackle. Also, clarify in your invite that the meeting can be forwarded to others. If you add someone to an invite, clarify why you are adding them. If you move an invite, clarify why you are moving it. 
And finally, going back to the first tip that I shared with you, once the meeting is done, send notes. If some topic was not covered during the meeting, if there was not enough time, you can keep it for the next meeting. In my experience, it's preferable to keep the recurrent meetings even if the agenda is light. Better than saying, because the agenda is light, we'll discuss some other time, and then ending up with meetings that are too packed. To make things simpler, you can always use the same structure to schedule meetings and propose agendas. This is the one that I use lately. Hi team, this week I would like to cover, on top of your topics, in this order of priority, topic 1, topic 2, topic 3, where the original invite was something in the lines of, hi team, saving some time weekly for discussions. Agenda will follow each time. My third tip is really an extension of the previous two. If you are having recurrent conversations with your stakeholders and they can forward these meetings to others and you share notes about what was discussed, then you're already offering almost full transparency on your work. Offering transparency will allow you to have more efficient communications because it builds trust. It removes distractions and puts focus on the message. You can offer even more transparency by allowing your stakeholders to see your priorities at any time. You want to share your product roadmap. There's specific tools to do this, but it doesn't need to be too complicated. Your stakeholders should be able to see what is the current order of priorities, what are the inputs and criteria translating into those priorities, what are the ETA, and what is the current status, pending or done. The first thing that you want to align with your stakeholders is what is the criteria for prioritization? You can prioritize, for example, according to which projects will bring more users to your app. Once you align on a criteria for prioritization, you need to estimate the value for each of the projects in the roadmap. If you are prioritizing according to bringing users, you need to estimate that for each project. Then, discussion can happen around those estimates. Some might understand that they are understated. Some might understand that they are overstated. These are valid conversations to have. By making your product roadmap always available for consultation, you allow your stakeholders to focus on what you're saying now, rather than on the broader set of all priorities. Apart from a shared roadmap, another way in which you can offer even more transparency is by always backing up your claims with supporting notes. For example, if you're saying that something was agreed in the past, attach the notes from the discussion in which that was agreed. Or if you're using a data point, attach an SQL query that your stakeholders can reuse to retrieve the same data point. By always providing support for your statements, you allow your stakeholders to focus on what you're saying rather than on its veracity. To make things simpler, to share your product roadmap, you can simply use a shared Excel with this structure. Project prioritization value, ETA, and status. Now you're sending notes after you discuss anything with anyone. You're scheduling recurrent meetings to protect asynchronous work, and you're offering 
full transparency. Nice job. Your team is probably already performing at a high level, and yet, on many days, you will feel that something is missing. You need to realize that working in a remote environment, even if there are no major communication issues, will still take a tax on your well-being. People are social by nature. We are built to be with other people, even the most introvert. I consider myself an introvert and still end up missing the personal contact. Even if you connect with your peers daily, even if you discuss on video, it's not the same as being with them in person. For this reason, my fourth and last tip is, in a remote environment, go the extra mile to get to know your teammates. It will make work and life so much more enjoyable. You can start by something quite basic, as getting to know their sleep preferences. In a remote environment, with plenty of asynchronous work to do, some people prefer to start earlier, and some people prefer to start later. Your teammates might also have obligations beyond work. For example, they might need to prepare their kids for school at a certain time in the morning. This one is easy. You just need to ask them or pay attention to when they tend to schedule their meetings. By adapting even a bit your schedule to your teammates' schedules, you will be showing interest and respect for them as people beyond work obligations. On top of this, you will get the best of them when you're asking things from them at the time when they are at their best. Another thing you can do to get to know your teammates better, also quite basic, is pay attention at what you're seeing on their cameras. Not everyone might feel comfortable sharing their surroundings always, so don't push this one. But if they do share their surroundings, as a background in their camera, pay attention to what you're seeing. Things that I have seen and have triggered conversations are pieces of art or books or games. For example, if you see that someone is wearing a gaming headset, then it's quite likely that they play some games. That's a great conversation starter. Yet another thing that you already surely know about your teammates is where they are located. You can expand on this to start some more conversations. It's always interesting to learn, if they want to share, what brought them to that location. Where are they looking to go next? It can also inform your future steps. Think about how educated you will become after working remotely for some time about all these places where your teammates are located. And trust me when I say that your days will be richer, your weeks will be fuller, and your life will be more enjoyable when you reach out to know your teammates. You will still be physically isolated so make sure you surround yourself with friends outside work. Don't neglect this. We are social by nature. It's not about being tough or independent. That's it from me today. As a summary, things that have worked for me as a remote product manager are Number one, share notes to facilitate and incentivize feedback. Number two, set up recurrent meetings to protect asynchronous work. Number three, offer full transparency to keep focus on the message. Number four, get to know your teammates to make work more enjoyable. Apart from that, just keep your word and keep practicing. I really hope 
that this was useful. Thanks a lot for your attention. If you'd like to keep discussing or simply get in touch, you can find me in LinkedIn at LinkedIn slash Pablo Sanzo. Thank you.